Hello and welcome back to Needle Lace Made Easy. Michael Dennis here again. This is the second part of how to make your corded single brussels. Make sure you have sufficient thread to get across the row. A good guide is three to four times the length of thread to space, i.e. One inch of space equals three to four inches of thread. It is not good practice to join a thread in the middle of a row. I have come to the end of the fourth row and my thread has run out. So I've done the two loops around the coordinate to finish the row off and now I'm just going to push the thread up through these couching stitches up the side here. And then I can cut that off. To start with your new thread, run your needle and thread up through the side couching stitches. And pull the thread through until you can just see that it's under that last stitch. Thread the needle through under the cordonet. Don't pull this tight otherwise you'll pull it straight out again. Loop it round again. Same as you do when you finish a row. Now you can pull it tight and that is secure. Run it across to the other side. Loop it under again. Make sure it sits up and doesn't fall down this space. So it's lying underneath the last row of stitches. So work down the space now but as you get to this point here you'll start decreasing the number of stitches per row. I have now reached the top of this circle and need to think about how I'm going to finish off the corded single brussel stitch. Normally one would lay the thread across as normal and work another row of stitches but that would go over the top of this centre circle but I've still got this space here and this space here to fill. In circumstances like this we would take the thread across to the centre circle and feed the thread underneath the coordinate around the circle rather than going all the way across. We would then whip these few stitches across the top of the circle into the circle. So we use a whipping stitch to do that. Take your thread across and then whip in the loops of these stitches into a coordinate on the top of the circle. This is how we will traditionally finish off a piece of lace once we got to the bottom.
and then from here now we'll do a double loop to hold the thread in position and lay it across the rest of this space. then make stitches it as normal normal buttonhole stitches We can only get three stitches in on that row, so again just come out on the side of the row under the cordonet. There's one stitch there I didn't whip in the last time round, so I'll pick that stitch up and whip that into the cordonet. Then whip back again. You don't need to pick up stitches at this time. We only need to whip the thread back to here so that we can finish the stitches on this side. And then out through the side again. Now we've still got a gap there, we can get another row of stitches across there. <clears throat> Double round there, lay the cord back. Whip it again. Probably only get two stitches in here, maybe only one. I'll get another one. And then back under. Now I've got sufficient thread left on my needle to work the spokes of this centre, it's called a spider's web, a spider's web stitch. I've got enough thread to be able to, to do that while it's still free. Once it starts getting cluttered up like it is around here, it gets difficult to, to do this stitch. If you haven't got enough thread, then sew off the thread that you've got up the side here, cut off the surplus, then start a new thread anywhere, either up here, up here is probably the easiest place, and then start um, to build on the spider's web once you've got your new thread. Again, if you want to make this a different colour, then you would have to sew off the thread that you've been using up there and bring in a new thread down the side here. <laughs> 